Ooh. That looked different. I weigh 142 pounds right now. It's a little off from my norm. Caught me some of that Corona. Still super tired. Having to move slow. We're making a wiper today, by the way. A little wiper crankbait. I'm still super tired. But there's a bait to make. We'll see how good this bait turns out. Yeah, it never got to the point where I thought I was gonna die or anything. I've just been exhausted. There were a couple points there I thought I was freaking myself out. But yeah, nothing like a little bit of restricted breathing to get you anxious, you know? Sometimes it can be like, a, are my lungs putting enough oxygen into my bloodstream, you know? And then that really stresses you out. And then you start breathing really heavy to compensate, but you don't need to. And then you start feeling tingly because you're over, you're hyperventilating. And you're like, oh goodness. Then you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm dying. But you have plenty of oxygen and you're just super stressed, you know? That happened to me a couple times. It's not fun. Now I'm just left with general fatigue. Fatigue, just tired. Had a fever for two days. I was bedridden pretty much for three. This is day 10 and I'm exhausted still. That's annoying. Hopefully that shape lends to this crankbait. Cranking as hard as wipers fight, you know? I'm appreciating that shape though. I've been getting the mice in here. They've been pooping all over my Lexan. If you guys ever find yourself with that, some of that COVID, and you're wondering if it's hard to breathe or not, I mean, you'll know. But if you're, you're wondering and you're stressing yourself out a little bit about it, do a quick short breath in. And try to prolong that breath out. As much exhale as you can, that calms you down. And you might recover faster than everybody else, but I'd say prepare yourself for like two weeks. Prepare your mind. I don't think making a lure has ever made me so tired. It's like marathon lure making right here. I probably shouldn't be using power tools right now because I'm not all there, but there's lures to make. Don't worry about it. There's, just, there's lures to make. There's not a lot that stops me from making a lure. You can try. I got about half of my smell back and taste. That was one of the weirder things about all of this. I couldn't smell or taste for three days. I've heard of worse. I've heard of two weeks. Chelsea got it too. She still can't taste or smell. But I remember as a kid, this must have been like fifth grade, multiple times I had these like pneumonia bronchitis -ish diseases. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the disease actually was, but it restricted my breathing so much to where it stopped. I remember going to the hospital one time with my mom and my breathing shut off and freaked me out. So I was kind of used to the anxiety behind restricted breathing and I kind of knew how to calm myself down. This wasn't even close to that. This was like, I just had a swollen airway. It's pretty surprising what, what you can get through as a human when it's looking real dark, you know? Your body's like, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Just coughed up a giant lung cake and I was back to breathing back when I was a kid. This is nice. This is actually making me forget how tired I am. I just cleaned up this whole shop and I am dead. Next day, where we left off, time to sand. And last night, I really realized what's gonna happen with this. Something special, something I've never done. We're gonna put an inline spinner coming off of the front. That'll make it an inline blade crank. We're gonna go for a wobble with an inline spinner on the front. Not just a wobble, a crank. You ain't never seen components like that put together. Maybe you have. Maybe you've made that before, I don't know. I don't pay attention to what other people make. It's too influential. I pretty much just said that you should click off of this video and not pay attention to what I make. Wow, expert YouTuber. It feels like I get about 5% of my energy back every day. I think I'm at like 75, 80. There was one time I was sick. I was young. I was on the top bunk of my bed. 
middle brother, Ryan, was on the bottom. I had a bowl with me because I was throwing up that night. I must have had a flu. I started realizing, don't feel too good, need to get down. So I'm like, Ryan, Ryan, take my bowl. Ryan, take my bowl. <laughs> and he wasn't waking up, he wasn't having it. He was just sleeping. And thank goodness he just slept and he did not hear me because from the top bunk, hanging over, I blew chunks all over the bedroom. And then he woke up. He couldn't have been too happy about that. Neither was my mom. I think she had to get a, a carpet shampooer because of that. I don't know why I needed him. I could have just threw the bowl down there and ran to the bathroom. Wasn't thinking straight. Okay, we got that down to 300 grit. Lead holes, eye sockets, pouring lead, everything. You don't need an explanation. Don't you love it when the eye socket just comes into the lip slot a little bit? I don't know why, but I do. I had to make those a half inch. This bait's gonna have giant eyeballs, because these are off. Those are a little too big. Thanks a lot, eBay. There, half inch fits. Just fine. That'll look even cooler, it's fine. I am gonna have to cut the lip now, though. Dang it. Chip glue bake soda. It's two days later, I'm feeling 100. Back to normal. Ready for some super glue fumes. Bring it. Life is back to normal. squeezed glue into the lip slot right there. And there's a little bump. That even got glue oozing out of the end grain. That was tight, as in pressure, on the inside of the pilot hole, not just cool, but tight. Tight once again. Holy smokes. Oh, that one almost blew. Look at, it's coming out way up there. Wow. Anyway, dude, camera, what are you doing? Yeah, so because of that in there in the lip slot, the lip's a little teeter-tottery. Oops. Probably take the tool out of the holder <laughs> before I turn it on. Oh, I gotta cut this lip up too. And what I'm gonna have to do is make those lines that I just drew there disappear on the bandsaw. Cut just a little bit past them. Don't mind my drill bit skip up there on the eye socket, I'll sand that smooth, but isn't that satisfying? Mm -mm -mm. I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist right now. I need to put this down, it's straight. Stop it. There. Okay. Wow, that was welded on. We're gonna see if we can paint this thing in like five hours from now. We got some solid reference on a hybrid striped bass right here. And you already know we're starting with white. My phone's getting some white on. Let's get that over there. What's on top of the white? Silver, silver scales. That's what's going on next. And you might have noticed, I didn't carve any gills. I didn't want to, not from laziness, but I think that it's been a while since I've painted gills, so I'm giving it a shot. Anyway, what's next? Silver scales. Okay, patience. You don't want to spray too much of that on at once. The window screen can take a little bit of heat. Not too much, but you can heat set it if you're careful. And now you might think it appropriate to be putting those black bars across the body once I take that mesh off. And you'd be wrong, because it's clear coat time. So that the black bars are set 
further away from the scales. There are more important details, so you gotta put them in the foreground, put them closer to you. You just gotta trust that process and trust that that looks better, because it does. I know. I wanna put them on right now, too. Just what we needed. Indications of scales. Nothing too bold. No, no, no. That's not what this fish is about. I recently ordered a bit more True Coat. And Joe, who sells this stuff, which is the best clear coat you can get for lures, gave me that sweet poster right there. Make bait not bomb. <laughs> and he gave me a bunch of clothes. Has that logo on it and some other looks, some cool stuff. I think I got something here. Thank you, Joe. This is the only place I know to get this stuff that's in these bottles, and it's the best clear coat you can get for fishing lures. The consensus is pretty well established by now. It used to kind of be a secret, but it's not anymore. There's no link in the description or anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding, there's one down there. You're welcome, Joe. Now I need to remember to do that. Oh no. Ooh, what shiny stuff should I put in this? Probably silver. No. I need to look at the fish. I'm actually gonna do an interference blue. Boop. Okay. I threw that everywhere. I'd say the most important thing with clear coating is developing a good feel of how much you're actually putting on the bait. When you're starting out, you can like really glob it on and not know that you're screwing it all up and there's gonna be like a big glob somewhere because you put too much on and your rotisserie's not perfect because it never is starting out. It's the most touchy-feely thing about bait making. The window screen is back over the bait. This is pearl white. Before that pearl white, I put gray, silver, and gold. Silver and gold all splotchy, but the gray over the top. We're gonna wait for this to dry and we're not gonna take the screen off. We're gonna leave it on, come back in with a very fine liner brush, and put the black bars and stuff where we want them with reference to each scale. So it's pretty much two layers of scales. It makes the scales all dirty looking, but layered on either side of that clear epoxy gives it depth, makes it more than just one coat of scales, you'll see. Yeah, hopefully the screen doesn't let me mess up. Oop. That was a mess up. I saw it come out the other end. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there with the screen crap. <laughs> I feel like this brush is getting under it and like making just bad looking stuff under the screen. We're gonna take the screen off and just paint these dots. Hopefully my feeling was correct. That'd suck if this was working good. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't working all that great. It's all uneven. I'm gonna have to touch that up even. Scales look good though. Yeah, that'll be much more appealing to the eye. Just doing these by hand. And there's one long not dot. It's just a stripe across the lateral line that I'm gonna have to get perfect by hand. Enjoy me struggling with this for a while. Right, after all of that, we have a decent side and a butt ugly side. Whoop! Scratched the decent side just a bit there. I don't know if I'm even happy with the decent side. Let's run with it though. I can put other colors and try to cover as much of that up with the, the gill plates. That was very hard. Vipers have a crazy pattern. Yeah, just keep rolling with it. Some wicked fast bat green. This is blue and gold. Go over the tippy top flank. This is a good color for bait making, fellas. Wine Pearl, US Art Supply airbrush colors. Makes things fleshy. I like to use it as a base around the head and gill plate areas. A Bob Smith Industry epoxy 
Packaging label is the perfect stencil material. It's seriously one of the only things I ever use to make stencils for baits. I have a lot of it too, so that works out great. Does that even fit? It's gonna have to. Okay, there's our gill plate. Let's cut this out. A little bit of shading too. Right on. Starting to realize why I liked carving scales. Or sorry, gills, not scales. That's not bad. Trying to keep the black nice and soft. I'm gonna go back over it with white. That ain't bad. That looks like wiper gills. Some stuff has been done to the gills. That's just paintbrush with silver and gold. Kind of shaded it all in. I got some detail smoke black in the brush. Gonna stay towards the top and around the eye. That detail smoke black, such an important color to have. It makes painting with black controllable. Eyeballs. Half inch eyes are so much easier to paint than three eighth inch eyes. I just sprayed a bleed checker over that black so I don't get any of this gold under that black. And this gold's kind of weird where it goes on either side of the pupil a little well, quite a ways, actually. Okay. I might put some red in this eye, too. Make it look injured so it doesn't look like I messed up. You can always do that with lures. Just a pinch of crimson. One vein. That's it. That's all it gets. That'll go on the bottom. This is tough. It's like stippling. It's behind a little bit of gold, too pokes out that end right there. Beautiful. Now I have to spray gold. Actually, yeah, gold. Very lightly, so it doesn't come up to power with the gold that's already there. Just spray a little bit, and then brown, like a coffee brown. Hopefully you couldn't tell a difference. Let's just do a dark brown. Yeah, that's not too dark. What do we got? That's pretty dark, but I'll be careful. Yeah, I gotta go full dark. That looks good, though. For some reason, a little bit of that gold bled into the pupil, though. Jeez. It's so hard to get it to not do that. Jeez. That one's better. Right on. You wanna see a real eye from a wiper? See, not far off. On with the eyeballs. Always apply too much glue. I like that. Remember, this is going on a spinner too. There's gonna to be a lot more going on. I don't know if that's overboard. I just wanted something right there. I did my best. I'm gonna go back over that with pearl white very lightly. The pearl white makes it go away a little bit because I regret putting it there. Let's do platinum, actually. There. Looking glossy, wow. Maybe that side is not better. Maybe that side is better. I'm liking that side now. That happens every build. I think one side's better, but it's not. Let's get the front of this bait made. Lovely. Just enough beads to cover the length of the big blade on the front. I don't need any weight, I just need beads. I'll be using gold and silver. Clevis first with the blade. Silver, gold, silver, gold. I ran out of gold, so I put a bunch of small silvers right there. Now this needs to be tied off with the bait on it. Or should, mm, maybe I should tie it off alone and then split ring it to the bait. That'll give the bait more loosey-goosiness back there. And if we want it to crank, that might be ideal. Mm. 
Easy peasy. It's gonna do that in the water. That's exactly what it's gonna do, I tell you what. There, there is something different. Let's get some hooks on this. Let's find some water and let's pray for a miraculous bite. Interesting paint job, interesting function. Let's fish. Man. Well, if we catch a fish, I'll be ready. Should be able to get this on film. It's as good a spot for my foot as any. Let's see how this bait works. Um, that wasn't promising. I'm not getting any cranking. I'm getting a, a tipty teeter totter. Yeah, it does not crank. Darn. That was an uneventful three hours. Well, what a discouraging fishing trip. Wow, that was three hours. Certainly wasn't because of hook sharpness. It's because it's not a two inch twister tail and a 16th ounce jig head. That's mainly why. <laughs> also, it did not work how I intended for it to work. It is a good wobbly, just below the surface spinner, and it does this. It does plenty of this, actually. It doesn't, doesn't do any of this, it does a ton of this, which is kind of cool, just belly roll. It wouldn't do that without the lip, so that's the function the lip serves. I'll keep it. I'll probably catch a fish with it later. I always say that and I never do, but all of those lures I was gonna keep and fish with this summer, I lost and snagged and never caught a fish with, although I tried. I just jinxed this one, so don't get your hopes up, but I just hung it up. We'll see. I think this is next. A little sneak peek. I think, th I think this is next. It has been a long time since I've made a wooden glider. I didn't make any. Did I make any this year? I don't think I made any this year. Wow. Thanks for listening to me rant about how I was sick and all other ramblings in this video. All the way through, you watched it, thank you. On to the next bait. Ryan, take my bull. Oops. That was one of the weirder things about all of this. I'm feeling 100. Hope, hope, hopefully. Super glue bake soda. Don't worry about it.